No, I don't really need to. I never actually stopped this video. Don't get that wrong. I never actually watched it again. This is a really ridiculous argument. And John Osnoff still fails to uh, explain what he did concerning the China accusation. He received lots of dark money coming from out, out of state. As well as he has a deep ties with China. There are so many different accusations surrounding his backgrounds and his monetary funding. But he actually refused to clarify this type of murky accusations. You know what? If you don't actually believe it... Please take a glance at this public record. All this history can be visible. There are clearly watchable and um, recognizable deeds left in the system. So he's been actually once upon a time deeply involved in the China. Because of that, there are certain type of records clearly casting a dark cloud over his honesty or relations with China. But he refused to explain or provide a sufficient clarification on the issue. This is a one way of uh, prevaricate oneself by not telling the truth. And um, David produced that he has a reason why. When it comes to his decline for the Obamacare. He believes that this government entity would never provide a sufficient market freedom. He believes a capitalistic policy abetting free competition would it be the best form to lower down and drive down the costs burdened and undertaken by regular customers. He believes that this type of encouragement coming from the free competition by free enterprise would be the best solution to excessive costs harming the domestic economy in every family household in Georgia. He claims that because of this Obamacare, which is nothing but a government hack, by driving out any type of reasonable entities in the healthcare industry, because they cannot wage a war against this massive titan oriented by government. That's the real reason why 18 percentile of Georgians no longer have health insurance. Millions of Georgians were negatively affected to lose their contract with health insurance. Because of those providers either jack up their prices because they can no longer enlarge the pools. They can no longer have a proper applicants or buyers. That's the real reason they decide to go out of business or they would like to dump charges on the remaining consumers who are eventually, you know, lose their membership. And uh, John, John Osnoff you know, fails to explain what type of relationship he had with China or what, what was the nature of and the, what was the acknowledgement of this China accusation? He just actually simply couldn't actually accept this type of responsibility o owing to the rest of Georgians by providing unrestrained and unclouded clear information. Then that's a failure, right? Right now, we are getting to the close of the show. We only have four minutes left, and we promised that we would give each of you a minute 30 for a closing statement. Mr. Altoff, we'll begin with you, and Senator Perdue, you will have the last word. Well, let me just first express my gratitude to the station for hosting us, and my gratitude to everybody tuned in at home for bearing this election season. It is so important that we make a plan to vote, with early voting ending in Georgia on Friday, because our health is on the line. We deserve so much better than we're getting from our government right now. My mother immigrated to this country when she was 23 as a young woman because she believed in America. She believed that we would have leaders who brought us together instead of driving us apart. She believed that this journey that this country is on toward progress, toward a more perfect union, was beautiful, and she wanted to be a part of it. But what's happened to our country in this last year has broken my mother's heart. Our country has been ravaged by a virus that our politicians told us not to worry about. This virus continues to spread uncontrolled across the United States. Hospitalizations are climbing. Deaths are climbing. 
our political leaders have demonstrated that they are not up to the task. This is not about political party. He'll give a speech in a moment about Democrats and blaming the Democrats for this and that. This isn't about parties. This is about whether we have competent people who will put public health experts in charge to save hundreds of thousands of lives over the next six months and safeguard health care and health insurance for ordinary people during this crisis. Mr. Rosehoff, that is your time. Let's go to... So he says that um, he really likes to thank the station for hosting this wonderful debate. He would like to actually thank those people watching this debate because they actually endured a lot because of this lasting election season. It's really boring. The early election ends, in, ends on Friday. So we are actually reaching the end of this season. But that was before the runoff elections. <laughs> they would have no idea they have to go through this once more. This is, this is, I didn't really know that this is a before that, right? I can sense that. So he's just really like, he likes to thank all the viewers who might actually suffer from this everlasting election season. The bearing of the election fight would be so challenging, especially in the midst of this pandemic crisis because the airwaves are polluted with the negative campaignings and all this um, hostile information attacking each other. And he actually, again, um, sends out a message calling for unity. His mother, as a young lady at her age of 23, came to the United States because she believed in perfect union and the hopes and inspirations and a better life promised by the United States. That's really the reason why he, she decided to join the United States. But in recent years, especially this year, what happened to this nation completely broke her R. She was completely devastated to witness this type of permanent division, literally separating each other. Yeah, literally pitting brother against brother than this type of um, ideological division and separation, separation one from another. That literally hurt her heart. Uh. And so far, many of the politicians are too busy evading responsibilities. They've been constantly claiming the very bizarre um, underestimation of the coronavirus by simply rejecting the recognition of risks attached to the coronavirus. Their myopic handling of the coronavirus eventually took a toll on so many people's lives. Because of that, there were so many people who were devastated, were literally dead or physically, or even who were psychologically ravaged because of this coronavirus. Politicians always try to teach us not to worry about it. They've been constantly emphasizing the benign aspect of the coronavirus, but that's not true. As long as they've been actually in consultation with health professionals and experts who can actually claim authority, then things would have been much better. Their early decision completely brought the nation to the wrong direction. So you're going to hear within a minute from Senator Purdue again playing par party politics. He's going to blame Democrats. It's not really about Democrats or Republicans. We can actually gather our thoughts together. We can actually move beyond the partisan politics. In that way, we can actually reach our final destination, the perfect union. We can actually you know, bring our union much more perfect in an ideal way, so long as we can actually rally behind the common cause in the midst of this pandemic crisis. So many people are dying. Let's not, to, let's not try to play a blame game. It's not about having a scapegoat who actually did this wrong or that wrong. It's very important to see beyond what would it be palpably profitable. This parochial narrow-mindedness is something we, we should avoid. That's not why my mom actually came to the United States. 
She, in, in the first place, invests enormous hopes and dreams and inspirations and beliefs and unity in the system. That's what actually triggered her immigration. But in recent years, the constant division persistent, persisting in our society truly devastated her heart. She was enormously disappointed to this type as to see this type of segregation and separation along the party lines and along the class division. It's time for us to move beyond our differences. It's time to unify our thoughts and a conformant together. In that way, we can properly fight off this pandemic crisis. This is a humanity's enemy. The actual threats posed by the coronaviruses are constantly growing. There is no easy solution in sight. The only way we can fight off this type of virus is gathering our thoughts together and a move. I mean, I don't know. What what was the, really the thing that he said? Uh, John Ostov thinks that he would like to be a leader who would imbue the na I mean the state with a much more harmonious message, allowing people to overcome discrepancies and the dis disparities out of common sense and unity. This type of appeal to unification would be so important because this nation is divided, there should be no easy solution to heal this broken heart and mend this wound that has been part of a modern day America. That's what he says. However, he would like to do what he can do to talk about hopes and unity instead of a sticking to division that would worsen our battle against coronavirus because virus would also prevail in the midst of the hostile division in our society that would actually give us greater up that would give give it a greater opportunity to thrive and propagate so within a minute after his speech david purdue is going to pick up the baton to talk about his position, but we don't really need to hear it more from him. He's going to again rely on the partisanship by picking up on Democrats for failing everything. This is not a time for that type of scapegoat, whipping boy finding. We need to talk about how people will coalesce into one big block in a fight against coronavirus. This type of unwavering alliance would be so necessitated to properly allocate our resources and to properly dispose commodities. That's why he's been asking for people to come out and cast their votes. Senator Purdue with a minute 30. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you to WTOC and Mike for moderating this tonight. Folks, this race is bigger than me. It's bigger than John Ossoff. It's about the future direction of our country. Make no mistake that the radical, extremist, socialist part of the Democratic Party is in charge. And John Ossoff, no matter what he says about individuals, will be an absolute rubber stamp to Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi as they perpetrate this outrageous and dangerous agenda on our country. Don't let him fool you. How many Democrats voted for Amy Coney Barrett on Monday night this week? Zero. Why? Because Chuck Schumer got him in line, and that's exactly what he would do with John Ossoff. This race is too important for that. You folks know Bonnie and me. You know how I will vote. You know what I've accomplished. But there's so much more, more work to do. We've got to defeat this COVID virus. 
And we've got to do it sensibly and get it back, get our economy back and get our schools back open, get life back to normal again, but do it safely and responsibly. That's why I'm running for re-election, and I would really appreciate your vote. Senator Perdue says, you know, he would like to thank WTOC and Mike who moderated the show tonight. Um, he just actually believes that it's really not about individual. This race is bigger than John Osnoff or even D.B. Purdue because it's really about the future direction. This is really cliche. <laughs> Very cliche. Uh, that means let's try to actually, you know, get bogged down by the minor details because, you know what, we are talking about the future of this nation and future of our new generation to come. If you ever actually make the right decision, everything at stake can be different. Think about it. If you ever give a power to Democrats, what would happen? The radical so socialistic takeover, that's likely to take place. Because the Democratic leadership will handle every little circumstance with rough-handed dictatorial management. They're going to have a very heavy fist on every member of the Democratic Party. That's really the reason why there was no single vote coming from Democrats in support of Amy Coney Barrett during her nominate her confirmation hearings. And eventually, once there was a confirmation voting on the floor, not a single Democrat would cast ballot for Amy Coney Barrett. Why? Because the Democrat leadership always had an iron fist dictatorship coming from the high ceiling of the party's leadership. Chuck Schumer would always organize the parties and oriented radical agendas. He actually wants to run for a re-election because he would like to fight off this type of radical invasion. If there would be more power given to Democrats, they would eventually turn the nation's direction completely differently. This type of partisanship, that would be so nasty. Can I actually record it again? It sounds a little bit bad, tell the truth, because I should have never stopped it. Once I actually stopped it, I recorded it the wrong way. That's a real problem. I don't know. I just really want to stop it. But I will actually just finish it. That's the real the reason I re-recorded it. Because I don't really know. I just wanted to stop while I'm speaking because I cannot speak forever and more. I mean, it's not really that I have any type of difficulty to speak, but I've been actually spending so many hours of talking and talking, so I just really like to stop it. That was really the reason, but let me actually you know, wrap it up. Let me do this once more. David Perdue said, you know what, let's try not to actually get fooled by this minor details or minor accusations that would be nothing. Because if you ever actually turn our head to see what matters most. Then we would actually notice the importance of the pending agendas. This ballot, cast by you, can truly dictate the future direction of the nation. The state's future is on the line. Let's try and see the forest instead of the tree. If you ever actually you know, have a broader perspective, to see the danger of uh, Democrats controlling the Senate, then you would never actually think twice about it. Because our children would never be endowed with the same culture and privilege once part of American pride. Because this radical top-down control coming from the Democratic leadership led by Chuck Schumer was really the cause why there was no single vote for Amy Coney Barron on her confirmation as a Supreme Court Justice, despite her qualification. Because there was such a partisanship 
loyalty. That would trump what's the best for America. Their obsessive parochial interest driven by partisanship, their party politics, that would never let any bipartisan communications or bilateral agreements. That was really the manifested eponym crystallizing the parochial partisanship by Democrats. They were going to handle every little social agenda in their own way based upon their obsession with moral and ethical beliefs. What's been so prevalent amongst Democrats is this idea, my way highway. This type of arrogant unilateralism is the reason why there is no communication meaningful inside the Congress. Because of Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi willed their gavel to simply smother every breath of democracy that could allow a meaningful discussion between different party members across the party lines. That's really the reason why we can never give our control to Democrats. Their leadership would have likely to control everything rough-handedly without having a proper consideration for the tradition and convention of the United States. In that way, Georgians would have never experienced the same American values protected and fought off by our ancestors because they would have liked to inject out-of-state dark money that would eventually dismantle the very fundamentals of what Georgians stood up for. Think about the Obamacare. They would like to take your opportunities and freedom in the market away from you. The government oriented a single buyer policy. That's really the only solution that you can actually think of because no single commercial entity can survive this excessive control in the market. They would never have subsidies. They would have no enough buyers. And eventually, they're going to go out of business waving white flags. That's really visible. That's really the reason why in Georgia, millions of people immediately following from the Obamacare adoption lost their own precious access to health care. That's really the reason why we actually have this many people who actually cried afoul of the system. That's not my opinion. Again, this race is not really about me and John Osnuff. The means. We should think outside the box. This consequence or by the election will have a lasting impact on our lives. You should actually remember what's at stake and what's at odds. Your tiny step or can make the total difference by changing the color of the nation. And that's really the it. And David Perdue says, you know, if you ever actually open up the door to radical, I mean, that means I don't want to actually repeat the same phrase. If you ever want to crown Democrats with the majority, then this type of oh, unrestrained power enjoyed by Democrats would eventually change the identity of the nation because they're likely to be a radical proxy of uh, millionaires and billionaires secretly harboring unfoundedly dangerous thoughts and ideas and beliefs because they actually want to turn the entire nation into socialistic countries where no traditions and conventions and orthodoxy that might actually be appreciated by American heritage can survive because of their addiction to money from 
outside. I mean, that's really it. I don't really need to think twice about it, but it's very obvious. Well, I want to thank you both for joining us here in our WTOC studio. As we said, this is being broadcast throughout the state of Georgia. We also want to thank our panel. <laughs> this is really broad, you know, broadcast outside the Georgia. Well, I never missed it. 